Um, but good morning, good afternoon. I am, uh, before we get started, we'll have Joe, uh, he'll open up with a little number and jump right into his class. I'm going to screen share just uh, for the sake of it. Some of you are getting the hang of it. Some still need a little bit of help. But if you, um, if you're going to our, if you get the email today, you'll notice that in the email, this is a, this is what the email looked like. And right here, it says um, to click here for today's materials. So what I'm going to do is I am going to, uh, I'll, I'm going to upload it a couple different ways, all right? First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, click on this, and what should happen on your computer is it should give you this option. And then on your uh, computer, you should have an option to print it uh, from there, if you like, some computers give you an option to download it. Um, so if you're looking at my screen here, it, can you um, can you see that little arrow right there, Joe, Gary? Do you see that little arrow? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I can't tell who is that down there. I'm going to ask to mute. My screen is a little small. Whoever I just asked to mute, can you see that little arrow right here? Gary Beath. I can't hear you, but um, all right. So that little arrow will download it, and then you can usually print it from there as well. Okay. So that's one option. <clears throat> one of the another option I'm going to give on this weekend uh, when I talk about the upcoming classes, I'm going to give you a link that's going to give you access to all the materials since the beginning. And you're going to have to get in the habit of using that. That link will be the same link. I'm not going to do that today. I want to get to the class. But while before we get started, I am going to also upload the music. For those of you who have a computer, you'll be able to. Uh, I haven't found a way to do it on a on an iPhone or an iPad yet. Um, what I can say is that uh, it, there's a way to put it on your device, but that's a whole nother class altogether. So what I'm going to do is go into the computer here and I'm going to find the materials. And this is session 26. Oh my goodness. Can you believe it? It's 26 sessions that we've been doing this since the pandemic. And so that is uploading and it's already uploaded on the computer. So if you have a computer, you can be able to click on it and open it up from there. And I'll screen share it as well uh, when it's time. So with that said, Mr. Joe Fontesha, I'm going to spotlight the video to you. Um, you can uh, take over and it's all yours. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. That was Bill Bailey, Won't You Please Come Home. And you probably heard a lot of extra, extra notes that I was playing. Uh, that is taught in our first lesson in Conductor Magic. So uh, for those of you that missed that, you, I would go back to that right away. Because uh, anyways, that's what we're talking about, how we can make that song sound a little more professional. So I am going to take for our class today, two songs that are very simple songs, and we're going to be adding things. So they are what I would call, the first one is in an easy version. The next time is going to be an intermediate version. And then it, the last one will be in an advanced version. So uh, that's what we're going to be doing and how we can make a simple song sound better or just play it. Now, for the song I'm, I'm going to use is uh, for educational purposes only. And it is uh, one that we've used a few times 
but the reason I want to use it, it's also in our Conductor Magic book. It also is in later books that give you more advanced ways of playing it. And so I'm going to teach that to you today, and I hope you use all of this. This material is available. So the first one is when the saints come marching in, and if we could have that up, and the way we would play this normally is when we get it in the easy book, we learn the chord, which is the symbol above the note, and then we hold that down. So what it is is that we'll do is we'll probably play it just like this to start off. Boy, that's exciting. Oh, my God, I was bored to death. But anyways, that's the way we kind of teach it because that's what the notes say. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to teach you how to make it even more exciting. So look at just as an easy version. And if you look at the notes, there's a little dot below each of the notes. What that is, is it's a something called staccato, something called staccato. And when you play the note now, I want you to touch it and just release it right away. Don't hold it at all, and your teacher would shoot you. There's a whole note there tied to a quarter note. Don't hold it. Just hit it and let it go. So, okay, so that I'm playing very staccato. Okay, so now let's go back and we'll add the arrangement back in and I'm going to play it exactly like that with playing staccato. So here's an intro. Now I'm going to slow that up. That's the tempo that was originally put in there and I'm going to slow that up because we want to play it for the first time in a slow, so we want it a little bit slower. So I'm gonna put it about 150. So for those of you that wanna write it down, I'm gonna put it at 150. So here's the song, Staccato, with the background. Watch, listen to how it sounds now. A lot better, isn't it? And all I did was play the same notes, same tempo, same everything, except I played it staccato, and I let that arrangement. I played that about 150. You can actually slow what, that down to What rhythm did you use there, rhythm. Joe? I used just the regular Dixieland rhythm okay. there. For, for I'm going to write that on Dixie here. Land. Dixieland, oh, use Dixieland, tempo 150 or lower i mean even, even down to 120 for practice okay, okay i'm gonna put so that over there does that look okay, okay to you okay everybody got that that's the first thing that uh, that i would try to practice now the next thing is that we're going to take the same song again but this time we're going to add some things called fill in or fx if you have that now some of you have it with a button up on top some of you have it in your right over to the right in your expression pedal. Some may have it in the touch bar, and some of us can add it in the pedals. So there are different ways. Now, if you notice, and the song number two, uh, when we go, if we can put that up now, song number two, it's the same song, but this time where we have that whole note, we're gonna add an FX or fill. So I'm gonna take the same arrangement, slow it up, And we're going to add, we're going to add the fill-ins. You got number two up there yet? Okay, so we need number two. So where the whole note is, even if, even if you see number one, we're going to add the fill. So it's going to sound like this.
So you hear I was putting in those fill on all the notes that you held. Now, you don't do it on every one, and I have to say that because a lot of people will put it in so much. You can pick and choose which one you would want it in. So uh, you could take the first arrangement and above the C chord, put FX. Above the G note that comes whole note, you can put the FX. Above the D that's on the second line, the G7, you can put an FX or a fill. Hey, Joe, and can I ask again, you a question? Yes. You look at the screen here. It, see my mouse moving? Is that where you're suggesting putting right. an FX? Right. That's exactly okay, well, where let you me, would put Let me just put that on there. About, so you got it in, in rank number two. Huh? Go to page two. If you go oh, to page okay. two, it, can you go to page two? Oh, there it is. It'll oh, I don't have to do it. It's there. Hey, there it is. You see, uh, folks? Shoo, I don't have to do as much make work it today. easier. You don't have to go and do all that. See, I've made an arrangement for you. Now, I did it quite a bit, so uh, but I would not do that many. I mean, just saying, so your taste, if you like it, you could do it. So it makes the song sound a lot much better, much better if you add the extra ones on it. And you could put one at the end, too. So you can see, you can find where you would want it. How do you like that? So now, that is adding, uh, making a easy song sound a much more fine or much more intermediate. Let's go to song number, th uh, the number three. If we can go to number three. Now, remember, we're still using the same rhythm, same everything. And this one here is for FX or fill. Yeah, I, put, th three, I put the word fill because some of you have FX or fill. So same Thing. Yep. Okay. The name is Phil. Spell okay. it with an F. I'm sorry. Make sure you do that. Okay. So you don't spell it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> this page. All right. Now number three is something that I we've had this in a class, and I think Robert even taught this. These are called echoes. And listen, when we grew up, at least when I was growing up in the 50s and the 60s, we remember we had these uh, quartets. We had a lead singer, and we had the people behind you. Uh, it, you know, putting backup, we call them. You know what they were doing most of the time? They would do an echo to the words that the singer was doing. Of course, we weren't paying attention. We were watching their jiving and moving back and forth. But when they were actually doing is repeating the words of the, the first few words that he said in the background. So when you listen to some of the late uh, 50s, 60s, and early 70s were the platters and the four seasons and the four freshmen and a few of them, four lads, all of them. Listen to the background and you'll hear them do these echoes. The echo is taking the words of the first phrase and then they would repeat it in the back. In fact, I think Dawn, with, uh, what was her name, uh, the lead singer for, uh, uh, for that, she would sing and then the, the two girls in the background would repeat all the words that she said. So this is called echo, which means that when I play the melody, I'm going to play the melody again, and it's going to either be an octave higher, or I can play it on the lower keyboard. So I'm just going to play it for you so you hear how this one would sound, OK? So here we go. Now, if you look, there's a, something called a turn. We're going to get to that. I'm going to teach that to you. If that's our final song. So echo is going, again, when you do echo, you don't do fill-ins because you are doing the fill-in. So let's put the song on again. And listen to how cool this sounds with the echo. I'm going to slow up the tempo a little. Same song, but with an echo. See, and probably you heard I put a fill-in 
in a couple of spots in there too. So the echo is just for you can repeating the core, the words or the uh, notes of the song again, and you always play it either an octave higher or on the lower keyboard, or I could do it in reverse. So there is where you want to practice, making a very simple song for an easy version into something a little more advanced. I hope you guys like it. Try it. That really, really is fun. And he circled the echo for you on the, on the sheet there. Okay? Very cool. Thank you. I hope you like that. Is there any questions? I'm sure there is. Can we see if we can get a couple questions? No questions? No question. Are there any I can questions see. out there whatsoever? Oh, wait, Charlotte Hunter has a question. Okay. Hello, Joe. Hi, Joe. Um, Hi. You said you, you, you also put in a fill-in. Where did you put the fill-in when you did the echo? When I did the echo, let me look back over here. When I played that G chord on the fourth line, because there's a that's a whole note there. See, there's not much going on again. Uh huh. And then I did one at the end when I played the C chord. Ah, okay. okay. So I did both from from uh, the second arrangement. I added a couple of uh, fill-ins to the echo. You see. Okay, so I Joe, where what, is this the page you're referring to? I'm right, right over where yes. the G seventh is. There, I added a fill-in. That. And then uh -huh. at the end of the song, I did a fill-in or a FX at the end. So I did both. Remember, I did the echo and I did the fill-in on, on this arrangement. So you did the fill-in after the echo? Well, no, don't do that. Oh. Only when you have a whole note that just sits there for a while, which is where the whole oh, note is. Oh, I see, I see, okay. G7, no, don't put the two together. You're gonna okay. do an echo, you do an echo. If you do a fill, you do a fill. Don't I is see. It, is this it here, Joe, like this? Yep, right there, yes, you got it. Good question. Very good question. Okay. Remember, thank you, Joe. Yeah, you don't want to overdo the arrangement because you're losing one of them or the other to you know, mixing the two. It's not good. Uh huh. So, so great. Joe, I, I got a question. Okay. When you, when you put the fill in, do you have to hit the button each time or, or put it once or what? You just hit it once and that's it, or you touch the bar once or you kick, hit the kick switch once. That's all. So, whenever okay. you want to fill, you have to hit the button? Yeah, you have to heal the button if you want to do fill. If you hit, or if you have it on the kick switch, you move it to yeah. the, or on the touch bar. Remember, we're not, using, we're not using the fill to be an extender. Just a little extra notes in there. If I hold it, it does a lot more stuff. So it's just to to fill in a, a a gap of just holding a note, and that's that's a kind of a just a simple arrangement. Okay. But you turn it on or off each section you want to fill in. No, you don't have to touch it. Turn it off. Once you touch it, it'll go off. So here's. That's it. So I see I just touched it and that was it was off. So it goes off by itself. Now, there's a class that we do where we could should do where what are all the things to fill in it'll do some of them will do a whole drum solo some will do four measures some will do even a piccolo solo there's all kinds of extra things that are put in the fill they fit certain songs all we're doing here is creating a something to happen while you are as a beginner or an intermediate that you're holding a whole note and nothing is happening it's just holding there say so we want to have something going on. So that's where the fill-in and FX was created to give you some extra things that takes years to learn. And it does it for you just by touching it, touch the bar, or touch the kick switch. Okay? And I love the echoes. I love echoes. Hello. Hello. My version of this book doesn't have the arrangement number three in it. Are you going to post that on the internet? I think Robert's going to have all three of these available for you as well. Copies. I'll I'll answer that at the end of the class and and the and the, uh, multiple ways you'll be able to access this. Okay, okay thank you. Okay, who Great. who just asked that question? Sue Sheets and Feeney. Hi, Sue. 
Hi. Yeah. Um, I'll answer that. If I forget, remind me at the end. But I am going to show you three clever ways you could get this information. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Also, remember, just because I use the saints, there are many, many songs that you can do echoes, especially the songs in the late 50s and 60s. There's a song called the Nat King Cole, I think, did called Ramblin' Rose. If you have that in your book, boy, that is filled with repeating the melody over again. And uh, that's called the echo. And uh, there's his wonderful, another song that you can use for it. So you can look up if there's a long gap between you playing the first three notes, that's where an echo would come in, which means repeating the same notes an octave higher or an octave lower or on the lower keyboard. And boy, that really makes a big, a big, big difference in, uh, in playing the song other than just sit there and count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the echo is really a key, key, key to make it sound what? More professional, okay? All right, let's go on. Now the next song I'm only using again because I have three versions of it. I have an easy version, an intermediate, and advanced, okay? And uh, this is called Just a Closer Walk with Thee. And with this, Here's what you'll find in the book. Is we got it up yet? So here is just a closer walk with thee. Oops, that's not it. I know, I've lost it. Okay, hold on a second. Let me get it over here on this song set up. I think we got it lost here. Hold on one second. Now, while he's doing that, folks, it, I, it's it's kind of wears my heart. It's kind of interesting seeing the song choice that he's using today. Uh, a week or two ago, I taught a, a learn how to memorize a song. Um, if some of you remember that, did you notice the song that he uses happens to be the same song? If if you notice when he's teaching something that involves a technique that's slightly different than what we normally do one of the things that the, the educators will do joe does it i notice a lot of the teachers do it is we'll teach you something that maybe is outside of your comfort zone so what we do is we say start with something that's simple so if you're not used to adding these extra little echo notes and that's something you to do i wouldn't try to do that with a song that's hard to play kind of warm up to something that's simple uh, it's kind of interesting because these two song choices are ones that I tend to re uh, refer to a lot when it comes to those sort of things as well. So um, I, I, you should you should catch on to a little bit of the theme that we have when it comes to some of these new techniques. Joe, is this the music you need up there? Yeah, right? All right, just a closer walk with the what right. I used on this was slow, easy blues, a little cool. different because I'm practicing it. I want it to be slow <laughs> and the intro is pretty cool for it. So if you've got a slow blues or a slow ballad. Now, I'm going to stop right there. If anybody noticed, I, there's, again, if you've got the music, you'll see that there's a F held to another F for almost seven counts. So if I wanted to, I could put a fill in there. I'm, remember, though, we're taking an easy version right now, so I'm not putting anything extra. But if I wanted to, I would definitely put a fill in in there. So here's... I'm going to take second ending. So I just played it very, very simple. And I played it so that I would have a very, very, that's the way you would play it with nothing happening. Okay, now the tempo on that, oh my goodness, the tempo on that was 90. 90. 
Whew. But again, you could speed that up if you like, but I just played it on slow because I'm practicing it. These are practice songs. Now, this song is absolutely perfect for you to use solo instruments like uh, trumpet, trombone, clarinet. <coughs> uh, so again, so now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to I'm going to play this with uh, 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 Harry James trumpet just for the heck of it. So listen to it. Pretty cool, pretty cool sounding with that, and I'm playing exactly the notes there. Okay, again, there's not much happening. This is what you'll find in your easy playbook. Again, we're not adding anything extra, but let's see what number two arrangement does, which will be page five here. So we're going to go to the intermediate. Let's go to the intermediate. Oh, my goodness, there seems to be some chord changes. Now, this is where help sessions come in when you can come in and you learn uh, how to do extra chords. And incidentally, if you have MCS Plus, when you get to this arrangement, add MCS Plus. And for those of you that don't have it, definitely call Joni and I. We'll make sure you get it on your next organ, just the way we have it. So, so, so MCS Plus will add some of the extra harmonies that are blues and you don't have to learn how to do that. So it's called MCS Plus, and I have it here because I'm working and playing on the Inspire right now, and it has MCS Plus, and is gonna add the blues chords for me with one finger. So here it is, here's the song done, Harry James, and I'm gonna read it. There's a couple things in there. When I play it to get to them, I'll explain it. Lower keyboard. That is so cool. Uh, how did you like that? Okay, so there were a couple things that I added. Remember from what we did in our previous song, I added some fill-ins. And again, where would you put a fill-in? Oh, that's kind of obvious on the second line where you have the D minor chord and the G seventh chord. I definitely would put in a fill-in right there. That's using something that we did. There's kind of no echoes in here uh, in the sense that I don't see that they can do an echo because it's pretty well moving all along. So I wouldn't do echoes in here at all, but there is- That's where you would put the fill, Joe? Where that D minor chord is and right there. That look right? Yep. Okay. <laughs> and then we could do a fill in on the third line above the D minor chord where the G seventh comes next. Again, there's a next line, second line. And I would put the fill in there. Now I wouldn't do the fill in where the F and the F sharp diminish. For those that don't know what an F sharp diminish chord, it's F sharp and C. That's all you have to play is F sharp. And that's what DIM stands for, Joe? Yes, that's a diminished chord. That's an oh, added chord. I thought okay. that meant demolished. Okay. 
That's a diminished. That's how I feel when I've been drinking. I'm diminished. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's that F sharp D minor. F sharp and C, make sure. Now, the reason is because the chord is now enhancing the melody because it's a it's an advanced chord. So if I didn't have the F sharp diminished there, I would put the fill in there because it's a long wait. You see what I'm talking? Whenever you change a lot of stuff, you, that is what's enhancing the song. That is pretty cool. I love that. Okay, we have any questions? So Joe, real quick, did you say right here? Right. Do a fill in or FX no. or the chord, but not both? Uh, no. Yes. If you did the chord, no fill in. If you okay. don't use that chord, then you could use a fill in. Got it? Hold on. Let me write that on here. So if you do a fill in, you won't put that chord in. If you put the chord in, no fill in. Okay, make sure you understand why, because the chord is enhancing that melody and the fill in is enhancing the melody. You don't want to clash the two. Pretty cool. That's use, what, we, what, what we use in musical terms, you're adding taste to a song and you're not over tasting it because sometimes that's over seasoning. That, that's Italian food sometimes, right? Johnny, Italian food over seasoned. Oh, I'm getting hungry. Anybody want to invite me for dinner here? I'm hungry for <laughs> Italian food. No. And no hands went up for that one, I guess. <laughs> All, All right. right. Anybody have any questions? Any questions? I hope you're enjoying this, guys, because this is fun. They're all taking notes, Joe. I can oh, yeah. see him. He's going to have a pop quiz on this next week. I have a question. Okay. Who's that? It's Gloria from Where are you? Mount, from? Mountain Home, Idaho. Okay. Where, I'm trying to find you on this. Where in Idaho? It. Yes, it might appear as Roseanne because that's my daughter, and I got to figure out why. Oh yeah, it says Roseanne and fam. Yeah, there's an option. Are you on a computer? Yes, uh, I'm on a laptop. Or oh, a so yeah, on the lap usually if you hover your, around your mouse over the thing, there's three dots, and you click on it, and you can click rename. I'll do that ah. for you today. Gloria, is it? Yeah, Gloria Cole. I'll just put Gloria. There you okay. go. How do I find the Harry James trumpet? Probably in a music store. Uh, no, uh, what, where you would find Harry, Harry James trumpet is in what we call a, a novelty section in your categories, if you have that type of organ. What organ do you have, Gloria? I have the aria. Oh, my goodness. Uh, All you got to go to places. is... <laughs> All you got to go to is categories, look up in categories, nostalgic. Ah, okay. And if you touch that and hit where you can see the screen, it'll say Harry. And that's not the uh, shaving cream company. That's Harry James. <laughs> if anybody mm -hmm. knows, I get Harry's uh, blades for shaving, so... That's if anybody didn't know what I was talking about. And then the the next to it is Benny. That's Benny Goodman. That's not Benny Hill. That was a guy from, from England. Okay. Thank All you. Right, we got another question. Gary, you have a question? Yeah, what was the F and C for S diminished? It was the F, F and C. Sharp diminished. You play F, F sharp. F sharp. And C. I'm going to write it down here. Give me and a minute. C. Hold on, let me type it in here. F sharp and C. F sharp and C. Oh, and just C? And just C. Gotcha. That, Thank you. Play version of it. Does that look correct, Joe? Yes. Yes. Okay. Now, I will just. Uh, this is a class that we'll have another time since that question would ask. That's F sharp diminished, F sharp and C. Because the diminished chord is very unusual for the computer, you could play it C and F sharp. 
But what happens is the computer is going to change the bass notes for you. So whenever you see a diminished chord, you want to play it as the bottom note. So F sharp has to be your bottom note and then the note above it. So always remember, whenever you see a diminished, you have to have that either with your pinky or the last, the first note you play, and then the other note has to go on top. If the camera could come down, let's see if I can bring the camera down. F sharp and C. And then you will get... You hear the difference when I reversed it? Listen, see, here's the... Joe, turn up your lower sound a little more. Pardon? Turn up your lower volume up a little bit. The lower... You want the volume lower. more? Just on the lower on the lower chord so we could hear a little better. Okay. Oh, yeah. Big difference. Thank you. Can you hear the difference of the two? Yes. So that's why yeah. we, when you when you play and you uh, want C diminished chords, for this is more or less for the intermediate advance, make sure it's the lowest note and then put the other note that's in the diminished chord and your teacher can probably tell you which one it is. If you do it the other way, the harmony and everything is different. That's the computer doesn't know which way to do it. So that's... So okay. if you look on the screen here, folks, I wrote it F sharp and C. F and C, I, I can put F and Okay, I got and. five minutes. We have another question. Okay, Martha has a question. Yes, um, this says F sharp diminished seven. Are you ignoring the seven? Yes. Okay, if you played it, can you play it? Would it be the E flat? I, yes. Okay, thank you. You've got it. Yeah, I, did, I didn't want to get that far advanced with that. That's okay. why I had it. Okay. Yeah. Good question. Thank you. I'm being tested. That was good. I love it. I love it. Okay, now the advanced version of this song, Just a Closer Walk with Thee, is adding a lot of things, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play it. I am not going to discuss it because this really gets into what it looks like when we've done all of these little extra things that we've been talking about. And this is the way it would look and with turns and all the stuff, fill-ins, and this is what would happen. I'm doing all of the extra things in there, playing it. So you could see that to study it this way, I would rather play the intermediate section and add the things from the computer than me trying to play all those extra notes in there. I'll be there for a long, long time. But uh, this is what happens when a pro plays the it adding all these extra things. And we're going to play Harry James with it again. And I'm going to teach you how to play Harry James in just a second. So I'm just going to play it through. I'm not going to discuss it. But you're going to hear something pretty cool about this again. So we'll get back to the, um, to the uh, slow version of it.
you see how many extra stuff is happening. So you don't want to have to do all that. So, uh, but that's one if you want to get and practice and get to play all of them, do it with my heart's content because I don't really like to do it. I'd rather have the instrument do a lot. It was of that exhausting stuff. just watching them oh. follow the notes. Yeah, the notes. I mean that's a that's what happens. So the last thing is we're going to learn how to really do that little turns and stuff. So I was using Harry James, and we go to page seven. This is the last thing. I got about two minutes to get this out of the way here for you guys. Then I'm going to turn it back over to Robert. Uh, there is, if you get up to the last page, there is a scale there. That's C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. And what you want to do is you want to practice playing like a like back and forth, hitting C, hit the note above it, and come right back. So it sounds like this. So practice that. You can do it with two fingers. So here's a song. Here's a, a little uh, waltz. And uh, it's done. Look at it again. I added all these extra things in it. It's kind of complicated, isn't it? So uh, when, you, when you have to add it all, it looks complicated. So when you look up Melody of Love, if you have a copy of it, you can add these turns. I put them in there for you so you can see that, okay? Yeah, but you don't want to write them in. Now what I did, if I'm going to hopefully Robert can show you. There is on the third line, second measure, third line of music, second measure, you'll see that there is a little line going through the note. You see that little line right there? That tells me that I want to do a turn, which is what you saw up above, da-da-da. You see that right there, the B? So I don't want to write all those notes in like you see above because it looks too complicated. So if you put a line through the notes you want to do the turn, that'll tell me, tell you, and when you get to there, do the, the hit the note, hit the one note above it, and go right back down. So it would sound B just like that, even though it's not written in. Okay? Now, if you look further down, you'll see uh, at the one, two, fourth measure of the third line is E. And again, I put a line through that. And that is, again, whenever... Line three, fourth measure. Right there. A fourth measure. Right there. Line three. No, a line three, fourth measure. One, two, three. They're right there. That's it. Either one of those. You can see the this one E this and one? the D. No, nope, that one's already done for it. That's written in. We don't want to write it in. There, this There one? is that line again. Yep, and the one before it. Yeah, there you go. Okay. And now that's going to tell me, without me writing and getting all that messy notes in there, that I am going to do a little turn, hit the E, and play the note above it and come back. That's how I mark it in the music. You can see how it looks when you put it all in there. It looks really, really messy and all over the place. So listen to how the song, I'm going to play it, and I'm going to put those turn in. And with that line, I'm also going to put the turn in. Does everybody see that? So that's going back and forth. So here is a really a nice arrangement of Melody of Love played by Harry James. I can't read, I don't have my glasses on.
I didn't have my glasses on. I couldn't read the music. But you see how confusing it is with all those notes in there. So that's the version of Melody of Love. And remember how we do it. Mark the note with a little line. Don't write in all those notes because that's how confusing it is when you look at it all. Okay? So I hope you guys got something out of that. You can play any any uh, waltz. Oh, my, you know, another good one to do is this one. And I'm going to do it with the <coughs> clarinet. Ah, did you hear it? Did you hear that little turn in there? That was from uh, Dr. Shivago. So that's another one. Anyways, that's my class for you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you get something out of it. And I'm going to turn it over to Robert. And if there's any other questions, we'll answer them right after. Robert, it's yours. Okay. So um, actually, here's what I like to do is if you have any questions now, we'll do that. And then I'm going to show you everybody how to get the material. And then we'll have you finish off with a number today. So anybody can have any questions whatsoever? Robert? Yes. Uh, on your, uh, one we just did with just a, well, so walk with thee. Yeah. Page six. Okay. You have two pages on that, that uh, write up. You cannot print both pages. You lose the, the last measure of the second page. When I go to print it, I try to reduce it. Doesn't doesn't do a thing for me. But I just I just made copies, okay, of page five, and that solves the problem. Is this page right here you're referring to? Yes, you lose you lose the last major the last measure. Okay, well it could be the way the printer the the printer settings are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it like this. <clears throat> And I'm going to show you how to get access to this music differently. So when you print it out, it'll print like this. Okay. So okay. hold that, hold that thought. All right. Okay. Thank you. Um, now, uh, any questions for Joe before I give you some ways of acquiring this music to, with all the notes that I put on there? No questions? Okay. Let's see. Got a lot of compliments there, Joe. Okay. Oh, wait, Charlotte Hunter. Yes. Um, I'm not sure how he did the turn. Joe, how do you, what did you do differently when you did the turn? You just pressed it twice? Are you talking about the turn where you hit the note and you do a one above it, those, those small little notes? Is that yes. what you're Okay, yes. you hit the note and you quickly hit the note above it and you got to do it fast. It's like da 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 da. Oh, okay. Hit okay. the note. Hit it. And you come right back. Don't go slow. You got to go. Oh, okay. Da da da. That's why okay. There's okay. an exercise written above Melody of Love, which is what you should yeah. practice. Okay. And practice that before you try to put it in a song. And you can just do it with your second and third finger. As quick as you can do it. Da -da -da. Okay. Okay. And it, Great. And you hold you hold the note after you after you don't go. Don't go. So you want to mm -hmm. hear the uh, you wanna hear the note. Don't go. Okay. Okay. Sound like you got hiccups then, so you don't want to talk. <laughs> All Boom. right, thank you. Okay. okay. All right. Well, well, we got two, one more question, and then I'm going to show okay. you how you can get some of the music. So, Gloria. Yes. Question. Go ahead. Yes. On the first two lines of Melody of Love, you wrote in the little, I'll call them accidental notes. And that was just to demonstrate to us the difference between marking the staff with a little, uh, line through it right is that correct is yes. that one yes they're they're both played the same <laughs> right okay thank yeah, you, you. Don't want, yeah, yeah otherwise I, I wanted to show you how complicated and how much there's so many notes there when you put all those turns in you don't want to do that or you put a little line in it across the note that you want to do that and that'll indicate that you're going to do a turn 
And when you do a turn, are you always going to the note above? Yes, that's just the type of turn. There's all kinds of different turns, but that's the simplest one. Okay. That's the simplest one. That Just follow the exercise that I have above Melody of Love, and if you could do that, you can do turns on any notes. Thank you. Okay, folks, so a couple things I'm going to show you. So first of all, um, if you were on our email list, the email that I sent out for the reminder today, um, again, I'm going to show that, but I got something else I'm going to show you that might be pretty cool for you. So when you go to the email, your email that looked like this, it, you know, here's today's class. All right. And it says right here on the screen, click here for today's materials. If you click that, you'll get the music, unmarked music. Okay. So it'll look just like that. All right. So that's the clean version. Okay. Now, today, after the class is done, and maybe later on this afternoon, I'm going to take the recorded video, pay very close attention. This is pretty cool. And I post it on YouTube. Now, if you go to our YouTube channel, if you simply go to youtube.com forward slash Fletcher Music Centers. And in any of the emails I have sent out, they all have a YouTube link in there. Okay. What will happen is the most recent videos are presented here. Uh, but you can also go, so you'll see here online classes. Okay. But if you want to find for sure the one that was recorded, there's this thing here called playlists. All right. And you go to the playlist, all of the virtual variety, <clears throat> you'll see the, the playlists here. And you'll notice one of the playlists, we'll scroll through, it says virtual variety, oops, I went too far. Oh, there it is. Virtual variety music class experience. That's what I put all the Wednesday and Thursday classes. All right. So Oops. Good morning. Good afternoon. Sorry. Let me go back here. And you want to click on the option that says full, view full playlist. Okay. Let me exit out of that. And here, for example, here's the learn how to memorize a song. Okay. When you go to that video, what you're going to find Three. is there's a link that I'm going to insert. That link will give you the materials to today's class. So you see how this says a link for, there's the materials for that class. Okay. And if you click on the link that I post on today's class, here's what's going to happen, folks. I'm going to show you. You're going to get the music that we just covered today, but watch this. You see all the notes that I added on to it? Everything that I did in real time updated this information. Okay? All those little notations. So everything that I did as Joe is teaching it has automatically been updated. So the moral of the story is, Go to the YouTube channel when it's posted. I would encourage you to subscribe to it and get a, and there's a notification bell on there so that when I post the videos, it notifies you right away. Or you can go to the virtual variety music, the music class playlist and you'll find that. And when you click that link will be in there. And when you click on it, it'll give you the materials for today's class. Okay. The other thing I'm going to do right now uh, again, for those of you who have an actual computer, uh, I'm going to give you, because the materials that I did earlier was unedited. So now I'm going to give you the edited version. And I just uploaded it. And so if you have a computer or a laptop or whatever, if you click on that, you should get the edited version 
that I did as Joe was teaching it. Okay. So you have several ways of acquiring the material. If you click on the email, you'll get the clean material unedited. If you go to the YouTube channel tonight, or when you see it on, I'll, I'll post it this late this afternoon. When I put the description of Joe's class, I insert the link and you click on it, it'll give you the materials for that. And then as I've been promising, I've been working on compiling all of the information and putting it into one link that you can access all the files for another class. All right. So you'll, you'll have the edited version available tonight if you go to our YouTube channel. So with that said, I'm going to turn it over to Joe and he's going to finish off today's class with a, um, a farewell for an owl song uh, for today. And actually, he'll be teaching us again tomorrow. Yep. Um, so if you if, you, if you, we learn by repetition yep. and that'll give you a chance to try to get the link from yesterday, or the from today and get all the materials, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All right. So, Joe, it's all yours. I'll watch it again tomorrow to make sure I got it all. Yeah. Tomorrow.